Dr. Chong. Hi, hi, hi. Is it your lunch break? Uh, yeah, in a minute time, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, it's like this. I'm very curious about you. Oh, uh, is it alright if I ask you a few questions about yourself? Can I say no? Oh, uh, can. <laughs> but uh, just a few minutes if right. it's okay. Good. Yeah. For my first question, where is your hometown? Kotegina uh, Balo, Sabah. Okay. How would you describe yourself in three words? It's tough to describe in three words, but I always tell people I have no, uh, I don't have all the solutions. Okay. What is your favorite way to stay physically active? I don't really have a very, uh, what do you call uh, hobby about physical activity? I probably do more of a reading and uh, keyboard exercises more. But if you ask me what I like to do most, is perhaps I probably would like to swim than anything else. Uh, okay. Uh, what inspired you to become a theology lecturer? I think it's, uh, it's a realization of a gift for teaching uh, in me since I was very young. and. Uh, Eventually, God put me on a path uh, onto education, and then finally brought me into a theological education ministry. Okay, and how old were you then? Theological education. I think I started doing my MDiv after forty. After forty. Uh, wow. I, I, what is your preferred method of communication? I like more to talk to people in person than uh, in anything else. Okay. Which course do you enjoy teaching the most? I like to teach everything. In fact, I'm a trained instructional designer and I'm always fascinated by the fact that if I'm asked to teach a course, I'll be able to do the training needs analysis myself and actually design the course myself. So I don't really have a very favorite subject. Okay. So let's go for lunch. Okay. I am going to thank you for all of this. What would be your food preference? Masila? Masila. Okay. Okay. So, Doctor, can I continue my questions? Yes. Yeah. How do you engage uh, students outside the classroom for support? Other than pastoral group, basically, um, if they come to me, I will just spend time to talk to them. Uh, what advice do you give students uh, for pursuing a balanced and holistic approach to their theological studies? I think I'll always remind them that they are here for a purpose to be a servant of God. So they would really need to focus their time on training them to be a shepherd okay. uh, for the church. My last question, what is the most rewarding aspect of being a theology lecturer? Uh, seeing the students actually grow seeing them actually develop day by day to be a better servant of God, more and more humble like Christ. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Yeah. Good morning, Reverend Dr. Joseph Kuma. What are you doing here so early in the morning? Uh, today it rained this morning, mm -hmm. so the weather is cool and nice, uh -huh. and just to have a breath of fresh air. Is it alright if I ask you a few questions? Sure, Darren. Are you more of an introvert or extrovert? I struggle within me to be an introvert, but then I need to function as an extrovert. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a favorite quote? I have a favorite quote which I use in a lot of my preaching today. <laughs> Movers, not passengers. Where is your favorite travel destination? I like to go around Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And so one place I've been going quite, quite often has been Cambodia and Vietnam. What is your favorite way to relax after a long day of teaching? I try to do something I've not done for a long time. Mm -hmm. That is maybe to play computer games. I go to play badminton, so I, I, when I go to the court, I unwind. I'm tired physically, but mentally I'm refreshed. Can you share any strategies you use to promote active student participation in theological study? One of the important things I believe is Students have a story to share, a narrative. I challenge them to share their stories and then help them through in the process. How do you navigate challenges in teaching? You know, one of the things that over the years of teaching is students agree with you in the class. One of the things I ask them is, do you did you study exegesis on campus? 
and I ask them in your sermon preparation, do you use your exegetical skills? 90% say no. So some of them have a, a, a mentality, when I'm in seminary, I'm here just for a degree. When I go off to the field, I respond to how the field is calling me. I keep telling them, if your formation doesn't take place here, it becomes difficult for us to be pastors mm -hmm. uh, in the world outside. On that note, how do you address the tension between academic theology and personal faith? Your journey in STM is a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Your academics cannot be divorced from spirituality. In the fulfilling of your assignment, do you see the hand of God leading you? What steps do you take to promote spiritual and emotional well-being of your students? Students must do something that they like outside the classroom. If not, you will, you will struggle with academics. Do something that you like. For example, when I was doing my PhD, I was so stressed up. One day I just sat and watched seven movies. Then I realized, oh, that was helpful. Can you name us one of the movies that you watched and why did you like it so much? Action movies. For me, is it needs to entertain you. Can you share any practical examples of how theology can positively impact society? We take concerns of the world. We reflect it in the pages of scriptures with the possibility of appropriate or practical uh, lifestyle that may change the whole dimension of where society needs to go ahead. And so I believe that uh, uh, all, all of us, whether we are in the seminary, theology belongs to the people of God. We are just trying to affirm that perspective here. Reverend Doctor, I wouldn't want to take so much of your time, but sure. thank you so much for answering my questions and I hope to see you around on campus. Sure, it's a pleasure to be a blessing. Okay, the young people trust us and God bless. Okay, God bless you too, Reverend. See you.